Hello and welcome to another painting video. In this video I'll be painting Horticulus Slimax and his mighty uh, steed Mulch. I'm just gonna dive right in because oh boy there is a lot to paint here. Look at the insane amount of small details. Let's begin, shall we? First, let's have a look at the bottom part of mulch and work our way up. I paint this part with Gulliman Flesh Contrast Paint. Then, I shade certain parts with Caroburk Crimson to make the skin look more gross and bruised. Next, I use Cadian Flesh Tone to bring back the original base color. I focus on the raised areas. Now, I lightly dry brush Kislev Flesh. This will lighten the skin a little bit. The bruised red areas in the recesses will look much darker by contrast. I repeat the previous step, but now I use Flayed One Flesh. Finally, I use Flayed One Flesh and a fine tip brush to apply my final highlights. You could choose to paint mulch entirely in this fleshy color, but I like to alternate just as I did with my Beast of Nurgle. There will be a final step to make the skin more nurgly, but I'll get to that at the end of the video. Let's have a look at the upper part. Slowly moving my way up, I base coat the upper part of mulch with Plague Bearer Flesh. Next, I use Bieltan Green to shade the recesses a bit more and to add some shading to the wounds and those weird exhaust fans he has on his tail. I make sure to make random and stippling patterns. With Reikland Flesh Shade, I shade the entire upper part. The brown really makes the green I have nice and grimy. I slightly dry brush Ogren Camo on his part to start the highlighting. And I do the same as the previous step, but this time I use Creek Kaki. Finally, I use Creek Kaki with my detail brush to highlight the skin. The final pass will make the highlights pop more. The juxtaposition of the two skin tones work really well together. Alternatively, you could paint mulch with either one of these skin tones completely. But for me, this works better, as I think all the small details on his height stand out way more this way. What Nurgle model isn't complete with some boils? I paint these with Yenden Yellow. Then I dot them with Screaming Skull to make the pustules pop. Any fatty tissue showing, I base coat with Everland Sunset. And highlight with Usapti Bone. Then I shade them with Serapim Sepia. The cuts on mulch I paint with Pink Horror. And shade with Caroburg Crimson. Mulch doesn't have a lot of gore showing, but if you are looking for ways to paint that, I have a lot of Nurgle videos that go over that. It is always a bit of a chore to go over all those tiny pustules, but it is worth it. It will make your model look rich and gross at the same time. And you thought the spoil pox had a big mouth? Check this one out. I start with the tongue, which I paint in Volupius Pink. Then I shade the tongue with Druki Violet. Now to add some highlights. First I use Pink Horror. Then I use Emperor's Children. And I end with a mixture of Emperor's Children and Palette Witch Flesh. Flesh. 
those huge chompers I paint with Usapti bone. Then I shade them with Skeleton Horde and give them a highlight of Screaming Skull. The lips I paint with Druki Violet. I use two coats to make the lips stand out a little bit more from the skin. Then I highlight the lips with Slanish Grey. And end with a highlight of Schlanish Grey mixed with Palette Switch Flesh. Only Nurgle knows what kind of diseases live in that huge mouth right there. Insane model, but so much fun. Let's have a look at his eyes next. Before I start on the eyes, I use Lamenter's Yellow to paint the stalks. I want the stalks to be lighter than the skin. It's a subtle effect, but it will work really well. As with all demons in my army, I give him red eyes. I use Blood Angel Red for this. With Uriel Yellow, I carefully paint an iris on the eye. Take your time for this. With the bat and black, I paint the pupil in his eye. This is some precision work right there. Luckily, the eyes are pretty big. With White Scar, I paint a reflection on the eye. Make sure you paint the reflection in the same corner on both eyes, else it will look very weird. I made the eyes look up a bit, as the focus of mulch is directed at the Nurgling hanging like a carrot. The what I can only assume are the whiskers, I paint with Volipus Pink. Then I add a highlight of Emperor's Children mixed with Palette Switch Flesh. Lastly, I add a highlight of Pure Palette Switch Flesh. Again, I add a color difference here, so to add more visual detail. All these tiny things will be one big blur if you paint them all in the same color. All those tiny feet have lots of nails. I paint them with Storm Furman Fur. Then I add a shade of Athonian Camo Shade. And a highlight of Creek Khaki. One of the eye catchers of this model is the huge shell. I paint this with Dryad Bark. Then I shade it with Druki Violet. To highlight, I dry brush Bane Blade Brown on the shell. Now to add some cool color variation. I add Sotek Green in the recesses of the shell. I use Dryad Bark to fix any mistakes I made. And there were quite a lot. Next, I go over all the recesses again with Nihilic Oxide. I focus on the inner parts to get even more color variation. Finally, I highlight the shell with Administratum Grey. This color on the shell works really well with the skin part I already painted. Adding some dark and light areas on the models will help direct the viewer to what is most important. With this in mind, I'll be painting Horticulus in a different manner. But first, I'll tackle that big tree. The tree gets painted with Rhinox Hide to start off with a dark base coat. I always like the shade with the wash to add some variation right away. This time I use Known Oil. 
Then I layer Thundia brown on the raised areas of the tree. I repeat the layer process, but now with a mix of Thondia Brown and Yusafti Bone. Next I highlight with Yusafti Bone. I end with several washes of Non Oil. I focus on the tips of the tree to make it look like it's completely rotten. The slimy stuff hanging from the tree gets painted with Death Guard Green. I also pick all the stuff that is surrounding the tree on the shell. I shade this with Ethonian Camo Shade. And highlight the stuff with Ogren Camo. All the boils and mushrooms growing from the tree and the shell I paint with Everland Sunset. Then I shade them with Yandan Yellow. And finally I highlight with Yusapti Bone. Although the tree is dark, as is the shell, both are visually distinct. It is important when working with large dark areas to either use a spot color or to make sure the base colors are not that similar. Another large area on the model is the cloth Horticulus will be sitting on. I paint this with corn red. Next I shade with Druki Violet, creating a nice off looking purple shade. Finally I highlight with Pink Horror. Now we are getting to a lot of small details. The stalk and leaves of the plant I paint with Orc Flesh Contrast Paint. The head area I paint with Mephiston Red. The pot is painted with Scrag Brown. And the soil I paint with Mornfang Brown. Now I shade the entire plant and pot with Known Oil. Highlighting time! First I highlight the head with Evil Sun Scarlet. The stalk and leaves get a highlight of Skarsnik Green. And lastly the pot with Deathclaw Brown. The tongue I paint with Volupius Pink. And finally the teeth with Screaming Skull. The tiny skull with shrooms I paint with Yusapti bone first. Then it is shaded with Skeleton Horde. Finally I paint the shrooms with Hex Wraith Flame. This gives a fun ethereal look to the shrooms. This unlucky head is painted first with Rekarth Flesh. Then I shade it with Druki Violet. I go back with Rekarth Flesh, but now it is mixed with Palace Switch Flesh to layer the skin. I end with a highlight of Palace Switch Flesh. The hair is painted with Black Templar Contrast Paint.
and I add some blood for the blood god because of course that's what we need right here. On to all those gubbins hanging from the shell. The bucket is painted with wildwood. The pot and hook I paint with iron warriors. I shade them with Agrax Earth Shade and highlight them with Runefang Steel. After painting the little tentacle with Ravebone, I paint it with Volipus Pink. The bottle is painted with Blue Horror. I needed two coats to get a nice even color. I paint on the contents of the bottle with Elysian Green. Do make sure to leave some blue horror on both sides to create the effect there is liquid in the bottle. The top of the contents I paint with Orc Flesh. This creates a shade and a nice 3D effect. Then I use White Scar to paint on the reflection line on the bottle. The rope that keeps the gubbins up is painted with snakebite leather contrast paint. There is a lot going on in this model, but as you can see, just picking out a nice range of colors really makes sure that everything gets a little spotlight. It is a lot of work, but with models like these you really should take your time. I might even add some additional highlights later on, but for the sake of the video, I didn't want it to end up being an hour long. With mulch mostly done, I'll have a look at Horticulus. I'm focusing on his skin as I want to do something special. First I paint the skin with Rekarth Flesh. Then I shade the model with Plague Bearer Flesh. I thin down the paint a lot with Lamium Medium. The ratio is about 3 to 1. Now I layer a mix of Rekarth Flesh and Palace Switch Flesh on the model. First I use a ratio of 1 to 1. Then I layer again with the same mix but now with a ratio of 1 to 2, adding more Palace Switch Flesh to my mixture. I take a moment to shade certain parts with Reichland Flesh Shade. I focus on elbows, hands, feet and other parts where a lot of blood flow would be. Back to layering, again with a mix of Rekarth Flesh and Palace Switch Flesh. This time the ratio is 1 to 3. And I end with a highlight of pure palette switch flesh. Horticulus has a fun looking mandrake root hanging from his belt. I base coat this with Zendri dust. Then I shade with Agrax earth shade. And I add two highlights. The first is Karak Stone. The second is Usepti Bone. The eyes I paint with Flesh Gits Yellow. And the leaves I paint with Orc Flesh. The huge sheer handles I paint with Wildwood. And highlight with Baneblade Brown. I also paint the wood on mulch the same way. The shears themselves I base coat with Caliban Green. 
and shade with known oil. Then I add two highlights. First, I highlight everything with Cabalite Green. Then I only highlight the highest areas with Ogren Camo. Now to add Nurgle's Touch to the model. First I add Blood for the Blood God on both Mulch and Horticulus. I make sure I use an old brush and that I have very little on my brush. This creates a nice texture on the skin where you apply it. On wounds I add a little bit more. And finally I add Nurgle's Rot to wounds, pustules and also the general skin. And here we have Horticulus Slimax in all his glory. This was quite a journey to paint this model. There is a lot going on but it looks amazing. I am happy with the result and I am curious to see him in battle now. Because I have been making a lot of Nurgle videos I did my best to add some new stuff as to not get too repetitive. Especially with Horticulus himself I tried to make him a unique plague bearer and I think I succeeded. In the next video I am going to end this current Nurgle run with the biggest model in the range, the Glotkin. Also check out my Instagram where I post pictures of current projects and behind the scenes stuff. I hope this video was helpful and thanks for watching.